Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 43. And today we're going to talk about querying a database. Now I want to make sure that you go back and review uh, Lessons 41 and 42 on SQL if you've just started this video, because they explain all the basic SQL in those two videos. But today we'll be looking at the MySQLI commands, the SQL improved commands to build nice database query systems. So let's go ahead and go to Eclipse and get an overview of what we're going to do. So we're in Eclipse right now, and you should be looking at the folder labeled Video 43 and 44. And we're looking at this uh, 43 database connection uh, code. So in the previous video, Video 40, we talked about connecting our system to a database. And uh, you've already covered all of that, so if you've forgotten that, go back and review that video as well. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to use the uh, MySQL improved command to actually not just connect, but to grab all the data from the database. Then we're going to show you how to uh, grab data by ID. And then we're going to show you how to create rows in your database. And then we're going to show you how to, uh, in a sense, auto-increment rows in your database. And then we're going to show you how to uh, update uh, rows in your database. And then we're going to show you how to uh, delete uh, rows from your database. And then we're going to show you how to uh, find out the count in your database. And finally, we're going to show you how to page through your database. So you may have a very large database, and you want to start with an index and end with an index. And so you need a paging system to do that. And we're going to show you how to build a paging system as well using the improved SQL commands. Let's go back up to the top and just talk a little bit about what we're going to do here. So let's start by pulling all the data from the database and displaying that on the screen. So I've created this all interface method right here and I want to pull all the data from the database. Now one of the things about the code here is you want to go ahead and download this from my uh, website and work with this code because I have a lot of documentation in it as well. And the first uh, SQLI statement we're going to look at is SQLI prepare which prepares the SQL query. And here's an example of how you use it. We have the connection in the first place and the SQL code in the second place. And all we're going to do in the SQL code is use the SQL code select from the wildcard from the particular table that we're talking about. In this particular instance, we're looking at the table sequences. And so let's go back down to the code. And all this code is going to do at this point is return all the data from that table. But there's a little bit more work we need to do here. Once that statement is prepared, you need to go ahead and check it for errors. And so we'll go ahead and check that error statement. And then we're going to use another command called the MySQL statement execute. Now that particular function executes a query that has previously been prepared. So first you have to prepare it, and that's what we do right here with the prepare statement. Then we execute it. And once again, we're going to run our error and see if there was an error. And if there's not, then we're ready to go. We're going to then define an array. In a sense, that's a rows array. So we're going to have multiple rows of data. And so we're going to stick each one of those multiple rows together into a, a, a rows array. So it's kind of a two-dimensional array. You have one array which has all the data in it. And the second array contains all the arrays of the arrays, if that makes any sense. So the next thing we need to do is, in a sense, bind the results. So we have our statement. And we need to bind the results that are going to come back. And that's going to be the ID, the title, Param 1, 2, and 3, if you remember the database we're working with. Don't worry. We're going to go back and take a look at that database again in the future. And once you've done all that, you're going to do a while statement. We talked about this in the past. You're actually going to tick through all the rows of the database that you're looking through and store all those in the row called standard class. And then you're going to actually bind all those results. And once all that's done, you're finished. You've created your rows arrays. You create your rows, which is rows of arrays, or in sense your record set, and you're going to free that, uh, in sense that memory asset up, so you don't use it anymore. You're going to close your connection using the MySQL li close, and then what I want to do is go ahead and print out the results right here. And then if you're actually, in a sense, working with Flash Builder, for example, you want to return all that to Flash Builder so you can actually do something with it. So that's your return rows. So let's go ahead and see how this runs. We're going to run this data, and then we're going to talk about our uh, database itself. Now, how do you actually run this particular command? Let's go back down to the bottom of our code. And the first thing you want to do, of course, is uh, create the new interface service. And we talked about that last time. And give it the handle My Database. And inside that, you actually want to run your particular method. And I'll go ahead and paste the method right here, and that's to get all interface. And what that should do is return all the data in your particular database. Let's go ahead and run that. Go to Run Configurations, and Run. And what I have here is return all data, 
and it returns nothing. And why does it return nothing? Because there's yet nothing in that particular array. Remember, we created a blank database. So we need to go back and put in some information in that database. And we could do that by creating rows and actually putting rows of data in there. But let's go right to phpMyAdmin, insert some data that we can work with, and then as we move on with our MySQL improved commands, we'll be able to modify, change, and add and subtract from that data. So go ahead and go down to your system icon. Click on that to bring up phpMyAdmin. Once phpMyAdmin comes up, go ahead and click on uh, Storyboard Example. So one of the problems is that we don't have any data in our database. So we're going to click on Storyboard Example. We have that up now, and we want to click on the Sequences table. And what we do, we'll up come all the uh, stuff that we need to start entering data. So click on that. And you should recognize all this from the previous examples, that this is your ID, your title, and parameter 1 through 3. We don't really know what that is yet, but I just put that in in case we need that later on. And we will, by the way. And what I want to do is now insert some data so I can start playing around with this table. And when I run my query in my uh, PHP, I actually get something back. So I'm going to hit the Insert button. That allowed me to insert into the table. And you can just choose any topic, or you get something from uh, a client. You want to start filling some, some trial data. And let me just kind of warn you right now, just kind of heads up. When you are working with data, be very careful with it. Sometimes people pass you data that's sensitive and they don't know it. You can accidentally put that on the web. So be very careful about how you work with data. Always start with development and always observe and watch your data to make sure it's not critical or information that should not be put on the web uh, unless it's under proper security measures. And that's where some people make their mistakes when they do development. Sometimes put development stuff on the web that should not be there. Just remember for security purposes, minimize your surface area. Don't put anything in your production server that doesn't need to be there. So let's go ahead and start with a, just an example. We'll look at the uh, fall of mankind, for example. So we'll start with uh, index 1, and we'll just start with a title, and we'll call man in the garden, right? Because there was creation, and man was put in a garden, and in the center of that garden was this tree of knowledge of good and evil. You know, you could use any topic. I'm just using this of interest. And uh, there would be a second index. So what happened after that? Well, there was the fall of man. Eventually he tasted of that fruit of knowledge of good and evil, and then he fell. And then go. And when you do that, all that information is put into your database. Now, so look right here. All the code that you need to do that has been generated for you. And so if you actually had to enter this from the command line, you could actually come along here and take a look at this and generate all this code from the command line just by copying and pasting from uh, phpMyAdmin. So phpMyAdmin not only assists you in actually inserting data, but but gives you the command line structure that you might need to do that as well. So those two values have been inserted. Let's take a look at our sequences table. And there it is right there. Garden and fall of man. So let's go ahead and run this and see if this database, see if this information comes back in our query. So the big problem we had last time was we ran this query where we were supposed to get all the information in our database and nothing came back. We've gone to phpMyAdmin and we've added some data. Let's run it and see if anything comes back. So I come along here and run our configuration. And indeed, look, now we now have data being returned. We have our first, in a sense, standard class object, and we have uh, the garden, and we have our parameters, and the second item was the fall of man, and we have our parameters. So now we have some data in our actual, in our database, and we can start manipulating it and playing around with it. So let's now quickly go through what we've done in this particular lesson. We came back to our original connection code where we learned how to connect to a database. And we said, now that we have that done, let's go ahead and start adding some methods using the uh, MySQL improve commands. And so our first command was actually to get all the data from the database. And the way to do that was to prepare a statement. And when we prepared that, we gave the STMT handler. We had our connection statement in there and our SQL command. And we're going to be following this over and over again as we proceed in the future. We used the mythrow exception error that we created in the previous lesson, lesson 40. And we executed that statement, and then we threw the error if it was there or not, and it wasn't. We created a double array, one for our rows, and then actually the row data itself. And we had this particular binding, and let me go ahead and show you the whole binding. We bound to our statement the ID, the title, the parameter 1 through 3. And with that data bound, we were then able to run the fetch statement. And the fetch statement allows us, in a sense, to pull all the data from the actual database. And we stuck that into a row. And each one of those rows were stuck into a rows array. You had a row with the individual row data stuck into a rows array. And then we could actually print that out. So once that was all executed, then we want to free that data up and close our connection. And then we printed out the rows to the screen. And uh, that was great, but when we did that, all our data was blank. So at that point, what we did, we went to phpMyAdmin. 
And in PHP my add we actually selected our particular database, which was storyboard example. We clicked on the sequences table and we begin inserting data into our database using the insert uh, tab at the very top. And as we inserted that data, we went back and ran our database query again. And when we actually ran that again, we actually got some data coming back. Ta-da! And those two simple steps are very important when you come to developing databases. And we'll continue with this next time. Hey, thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively.